name's Ben Phillips. I'm pastor at First Baptist Church in Murphy, Texas, and I'm glad you're joining us to learn about utilizing the Think Journal. Uh, we're going to talk about journaling through Scripture. At First Baptist Murphy, or anybody who wants to join us, we're reading through the New Testament together in chronological order. Uh, we'll have some plans available that uh, you can download uh, online. And then the other thing that we are doing is encouraging uh, everybody to journal through Scripture as you're reading through it. A little bit about my history is uh, I came to trust in Christ as a, a 10-year-old boy. I'd grown up in a Christian home, grown up in church. But it really wasn't until college that I developed a discipline in reading the Bible and how to read and study and apply the Bible. And I'm thankful for a lot of different uh, disciple makers and mentors who helped me in that journey. I began serving as a campus minister at Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia, Arkansas in 1996. And when I got there, uh, I was excited about discipling students. And one of the things I discovered is there were so many students who were just like me. They'd grown up in a Christian home, grown up going to church all their life, but they didn't know how to study and apply the Bible. They didn't have any kind of plan. They didn't know how to engage and have a, a quiet time. So I began a process in discipling students, but then God really began to convict me as a dad, as a spiritual leader in my home. What am I doing to disciple my kids? What am I doing to help them learn how to read and study the Bible. And so we went through a process as a family where uh, my wife and I developed what I call the Think Journal as, as a process to equip our children to engage in inductive Bible study. And so THINK is an acronym. The T is for text and topic. The H is for hear and observe. The I is for inscribe and reflect, and the N is for nurture and apply, and the K is for kneel and pray. And so I just want to cover that briefly, and I want to show you some of our original journal articles as we uh, started this process. You see, with our family, uh, the first journey through the New Testament for us was in 2008. At that time, my children were three and seven and ten. And then we started uh, working through uh, the New Testament again in 2009. Uh, at that time, my kids were 11 and 8 and 4. And that second journey through, we worked on journaling through uh, the New Testament as we uh, read through it together. So the T is for text and topic. Uh, so this is an opportunity for you to uh, identify what passage have you read, what is the main topic or idea of the passage. And one of the things I always encourage people to do is to uh, read through the entire paragraph or chapter before you begin focusing on a few verses. One of the things you'll see uh, on this slide is my son uh, Hayden, who at the time we started this was uh, four years old. So he really wasn't reading on his own. So normally it was uh, me or my wife uh, reading a passage out loud to him. And then we would encourage him to draw out some pictures. And you'll notice that you can see some uh, pictures that he uh, drew out regarding godly sorrow and repentance. So you see a sad face and a smiley face. The other thing you'll see is that my wife, as she was reading through the text with him, she would ask him some questions and she wrote out some of his responses. So you really can do this with children uh, regardless of their ages. Uh, one of the things I just encourage you to, as a parent not to be uh, too dogmatic and forceful because you really want this to be a great experience in your children uh, reading through the scripture. So the T is text and topic. The H is for hear and observe. And this is where you begin to gather a lot of facts as you're reading through the text. So some key questions I encourage you to think about. 
what does this say in context? Think of the paragraph, think of the chapter, think of the entire book you're reading through and what the message is. What is the intended message for the original audience? Ask five W's and an H, who, what, where, when, why, and how. And as you ask those questions, as you read through each chapter, each paragraph, it's going to reveal a lot of different things to you that are going to help you gain some facts so you really understand what the text is saying. What do I observe about God or people? What, do I, uh, what is related, repeated, emphasized, similar, or contrasted? All of these help you to gather this information. So what am I hearing? What am I observing in the text? Now you'll see in this picture here, Christian, who at the time was eight. So he's reading, uh, mostly on his own. A lot of times I would read along with him. So we would uh, take turns reading some different paragraphs. And then oftentimes he would uh, draw some pictures. Now you'll notice in there, uh, I'm, I'm just going to encourage you to read that passage in Matthew 14 and see if you can't discover what that first picture he drew is. And then uh, the other picture is about the uh, five loaves and two fish, and he drew a picture there. Again, uh, this is an eight-year-old, so not a whole lot of detail, but uh, a little bit more than a four-year-old. So uh, again, if your children are just beginning this, parents, I'm going to encourage you uh, to help them along in this uh, process. And you may encourage them what they can draw or write out just depending on their age and their capability. So the T is for text and topic, the H is for hear and observe, and the I is for inscribe and reflect. And this is where you really begin to think about, okay, what does this mean? What did I learn? Is there an example to follow, a sin to avoid, a promise to claim, a truth to believe, a prayer to repeat, a command to obey, or a condition to meet? A verse to memorize, or an error to correct, or maybe a challenge to face. And so you can wrestle with this and begin to really wrestle with, okay, uh, what, is, what does this passage really mean? And you'll notice this, I, I love this, again, showing some age progression in somebody that is reading and learning. Uh, uh, this is my daughter who, when she began this process, was uh, age 11 and she was reading through the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and in Matthew chapter 5, one of the things that God used to uh, speak to her was what uh, God said uh, about marriage. Now, granted, this is an 11-year-old, but this is something that she read in the text and God revealed to her and she was uh, convicted about and she wrote it down. And so, dads, I want you to notice this. She says, God wants me to have a husband that will promise to stay with forever and that uh, I will uh, do the same for him and that we won't get a divorce or commit adultery. Now dads, I've said that in a variety of places and one of these days when a guy comes knocking at the door, I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna show this to him and I'm gonna challenge him to, to think about this uh, and I'm sure she's reflected on it a little bit more since then. But uh, you can see just the process we're going through. So uh, the T is for text and topic. H is for hear and observe. I is for inscribe and reflect. And then the N is for nurture and apply. And some key questions to help you think about this. How does God want me to grow relationally in loving Jesus and loving others? How do I need to repent? or change. And here, again, I would encourage you to examine then scribe and reflect and what you wrote down. What specifically does God want you to believe or obey right now? And then as a result of reading this passage, I will. It's important to write out, okay, this is what you think God is saying to you and how you believe God wants you to obey and to put into practice and apply this passage. You'll see in this next slide uh, my, my wife, Karen, as she's journaling through a passage early on there in Matthew chapter 2. 
So you can see as, as we get a little bit older, we become a little more critical and reflective in our thinking. So we're to the last letter, uh, kneel and pray. We've talked about text and topic, hear and observe, inscribe and reflect, nurture and apply. And now we talk about kneeling and praying. You don't really have to kneel, but sometimes it can be very important as we pray to uh, assume a very humble kind of posture. And so as we think about this, what do you need to say to God after reading this passage? You see, part of reading the Bible is uh, having this dialogical relationship with God. We're hearing what he is saying to us, and then we're talking to him about what we're learning. Uh, one of the things I like to do is practice expository praying, praying scripture back to God. It'll help you to pray creatively. And so pray through some of those scriptures. Pray about what God has revealed to you that you need to apply, that... Uh, uh, ask the Holy Spirit to empower you to believe and to obey what God has revealed uh, to you uh, through your Bible study. And then you'll see in this slide here, uh, one of the passages I read uh, early on as we were reading through the New Testament. And just want to show you some different examples, different ages, so you'll get a feel. We'll include a fuller example online for you that you can download and look at that'll give you uh, some help. And so working through this think journal, uh, text and topic, hear and observe, inscribe and reflect, nurture and apply, kneel and pray. And as you go through this inductive study process, I, I would encourage you to, to take notes. There's something that happens uh, cognitively for us as, as we write out what God is saying to us and as we write out and reflect upon our thoughts. It's been a beneficial to, to me and to my entire family. In fact, uh, most of my children, they consistently uh, journal and write out some of the things that God is saying to them. And I think it's because we started that process uh, early on, but none of us are ever too old to learn and to, to grow in this. And so I wanna invite you on this journey to journal through the New Testament together. And I'll provide some uh, downloads where you can download a half page where you can journal or a full eight and a half by 11 page where you can uh, journal through the New Testament. You're welcome to print off and share as many copies of those as you would like. And one of the things I would encourage you to do uh, is to keep track of what God is saying to you. Because it's amazing as I've looked back in that first time of our family journaling through the New Testament, uh, what God said to them then and how he's continuing to reveal himself uh, to them. And I'm praying for you that as you begin this journey and reading through the New Testament and journaling through scripture, that God will reveal himself to you in some significant ways that will grow you closer as uh, disciple of Christ, and that your understanding of the New Testament will really transform uh, the way you live your life. And I look forward to hearing some of your stories about what God is doing in your life as you journal through the New Testament. We'll talk to you later. Bye.